In a recent video, I showed you how to use your Cricut markers and pens in Design Space, and I showed you how Design Space will take your letters and outline them with pens. But what if you want to fill in those letters? Well, I'm going to show you just how to do that in this video. If you're new here, my name is Nisha. Welcome to Little Craft Nest. And if you're interested in crafting and Cricut tutorials, make sure you hit that subscribe button and press that notification bell so that you won't miss a video. Now, if you did miss the video of how to use the Cricut markers and pens in Design Space, I'll leave a link down below in the description for that video. Let's jump on over to Design Space. The first thing we're going to do is go to the left-hand side and select text, and I'm just going to type welcome. And let's change our font. I want to do a script font today. So how about August, June? And I'm just going to make this a little bigger. I'm also going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a little better. And I'm going to remove my grid lines by going in between the two rulers and just clicking that button there. And our grid lines are gone. Now we have the word welcome here and we want to get our Cricut to draw the letters, not cut them out. So we're going to go to the top and under operation where it says basic cut, click on the arrow and we're going to select the pen. Now you'll notice when we get our Cricut to make this, it's just going to outline the letter with the pen and not fill it in. And since this is a script font, our letters are also overlapping. And so our pen would overlap each letter. But I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to go down to the bottom right and just weld our word together. And now we have one solid layer and our machine will simply trace it outside of our text. Now, if we want our Cricut machine to also fill in each letter with pen, we are going to have to do some work first. So we're going to go to the left hand side and select our shapes tool and we are going to grab the square. Now at the bottom left hand corner of the square, you're going to want to click the lock to unlock the square and we are going to make this as skinny and long as possible. And then we're going to go back up to the top under operation and we're also going to select the pen. So now when our machine makes this, it's going to trace a really long skinny rectangle, but we want this to look more like a solid line. So I'm going to grab the arrows here and just make this even skinnier so it looks like a solid line. Now when our machine makes this, it will draw a solid line here. But we only have one line and we're going to have to duplicate this a number of times. So we're going to go to the top right and press duplicate maybe about 10 times. Now I'm going to drag my cursor over all my lines and we're going to select them all and go up to the top and press align and center. And we're going to press align one more time and go right down to the very bottom and press distribute vertically. And what that does is makes every line have the same distance between each line. Now we still have all our lines selected. So while they're still selected, we are going to go back to the top right and press duplicate once again. And now we have our second group of lines selected. We are going to put them right in between our first group of lines and that looks a little more full now. And then we can do the same thing again, press duplicate one more time and layer these lines in between as well. Now I'm going to unclick by just clicking the screen and then I'm going to select all three layers of these lines here and we'll go back to the top again. We're going to align these once more so we're going to center them and then we'll go down to the bottom again and distribute vertically. Now I'd still like this to be a little fuller so I'm going to duplicate all my lines one more time and just place them inside the lines I already have. And if you want, you can go back and you can align those one more time. Now our rectangle is starting to look quite a bit more solid. And our next step is we're going to want to slice our word welcome in all these lines. But we can only slice two layers at a time and we have a whole pile of layers here with all these lines. So we are going to select all our lines again, and then we're going to go to the bottom right and we are going to weld them all together. Now you'll notice in the layers panel, we don't have all those individual lines anymore. 
Since we welded all our lines together, it has become just one layer. Keep in mind, the more lines you have, the longer it's going to take your machine to make all those lines. So depending on what you're looking for, you may want to do fewer lines or even more lines if you have a lot of patience. So I'm going to grab my word welcome here. I'm just going to size it down a little bit because it's kind of big. And I'm going to bring this over top of our lines. Now, if we were to slice it like this, uh, we would get vertical lines going through all our letters. Another thing you can do is you can just use the turn arrow here and turn your word welcome. Then when a machine makes it, our lines would be going in different directions. So depending on what you're looking for, you can do that as well. Before I slice these, I want to duplicate my word welcome and I'm going to show you why in a minute. So I'm going to put this word aside here. Now I'm going to select our line layer here and the word welcome. I'm just going to drag over both of them and then we're going to go to the bottom right and press slice. Now we're going to end up with a bunch of different layers here. We do not need this layer so we're just going to delete that and we're going to have a number of different copies. And what you want to do is just look at the one that you like the best. And I'm thinking I like this one turned out the best. So I'm going to delete these other two. And now if we were going to get our Cricut to use the pens to write out this, it would make all these little tiny lines to make our letter. But I also want to have a nice outline going over each line. So I'm going to grab our duplicate copy welcome and I'm going to place this over top. And to get that perfectly lined up, we can select both those layers and go to align and then we can center this. And before we press make it, we're going to select both layers and we are going to attach them together. You could weld them if you want. I just like to attach just in case I ever want to make any changes. You can also change the pen that you want if you go to the top where it's operation and click on that black square. We already had the pen selected, but you can change your marker. So you could do your gel pens or a marker or glitter gel. Just keep in mind the fatter the tip, the more filled in your design is going to be. So I like using markers. So I'm going to select the one millimeter marker and I'm going to do this in gold. So let's go over to make it and test this out. Select continue and I'm just going to be doing this on a piece of copy paper. Just pull one out of my printer and we're going to load our gold marker into clamp A. So here is our final hatch filled result. You can see our marker colored in each of our letters and we have all these little lines here. And then we also have our solid line going around the outside of the letters. We did miss a tiny spot there that you could go over again with your hand with a marker. And I also just wanted to show you what it would look like if we did not fill in the letter. So I did it with just the outline. So here is the outline of our word welcome. Now I had the machine draw this word out after I finished doing the hatch fill one and my marker started drying out a little bit. So you'll notice it's not quite solid. So I should have switched my marker before I did this and gave my marker some time to get that ink down to the bottom again. So you're always going to want to test your markers before you use them and also keep them stored upside down. So just for comparison, here we have it. There is our outline and this is what happens when we do the hatch fill. Now if you wanted to, you could just go in by hand with your marker afterwards and color it in yourself or you could get your Cricut machine to do it for you. Now our second option does require more work but it is kind of a cool effect depending on what you're going for. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions about this method and I'll try to answer your questions. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you learned something new, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you on more crafting adventures.